So there's been a few people on TikTok showing you how to sharpen hollow chisels. And they often tell you to get a cone sharpener from like Lee Valley, which fits inside of the, uh, of the chisel and sharpens that. I just want to point out that there are two different types of chisels. The type of chisel that the uh, cones come and sharpen, which they're available in two different sizes, the large for large ones and the small for small, each one being a different grit. So there's a rough course and a finishing course should be, should be recommended. Let me explain, first of all, the types of uh, chisels there are. So this is a Japanese pattern. What distinguishes a Japanese pattern is it has a large flute, a, sing a spur, and a single spur, okay? And they're a little more pointy at the ends, okay? That's a Japanese pattern, the only one still manufactured. Now a British pattern, which is the original ones, that's it. You'll notice that that's a less of a sharp point. And the insides, the insides actually have a little file mark here. Okay, so there's a little different sharpening. Those ones take this type of uh, sharpener, which actually um, has nose pieces that'll fit inside. And so you would take your sharpener, put the correct one on, and these are run like this, and they sharpen that way. They're held in a brace and bit, and uh, they, they do that. There are then special files, which if we look in this 50s catalog, you can see there is the sharpener, and these are the special files for the inside corner. Now, what's the advantage of a Japanese chisel over a, a, um, a Japanese pattern over a British pattern? The British pattern doesn't have a spur. It doesn't have a center spur. And notice that this, it's double fluted and it's a flat bottom. These type will cut a flat bottom mortise. These type, the Japanese pattern, let me see if I can get a larger one. You see, they don't. Uh, th sorry, this is a ja uh, this is a Japanese pattern. They do not. They cut a sort of a sloppy bottom. Now, out of interest, I thought you'd like to see the world's smallest hollow chisel, and this one is three millimeters. That is less than an eighth of an inch. That's the smallest hollow chisel ever manufactured, and you can also get them in long lengths. This is your standard length of a chisel, which is three inches. These are six inches. Very rare. Uh, anyway, that's how, or so you know, how to sharpen hollow chisel mortises. Okay, so let me show you a little up close uh, the difference in the augers from a British pattern to a Japanese pattern. So this is the Japanese pattern, and this is the British pattern. You'll notice that the British pattern is flat across, no spur, double fluted with spurs on both sides. Japanese pattern, single spurred, uh, single flute with a spur in the center and quite an aggressive um, spiral. This is more of a Jenkins pattern, okay? Uh, these are meant to go at higher speeds than these ones. These generally run at a slower speed. Now, the other thing you'll notice is there is no flare. The flare is a lot smaller. Notice the flare here. That corresponds to the opening at the end of the chisel. Very important that we leave proper clearance there. The other thing I'd like to show you is the British pattern fits much more precisely in the chisel, okay? And these augers don't tend to, what I call, make a circle outside of the box. The Japanese pattern, on the other hand, tends to, uh, well, wobble in the, in, the, in the block. So here's a Japanese pattern. It actually has quite a bit of, quite a bit of play, and the spur can wander outside of the um, of the mortise, 
Now, the other thing is I've got some Chilco. So these two are both Chilco brand, the last manufacturer to manufacture the British pattern. Okay, and, and what you, so you can see the you can see that flat bottom sort of arrangement. You're also going to notice that Chilco made a very shallow wall mortise. These can split very easy, but they're much easier to plunge in larger diameters. Uh, so I have a few of those. That's a these are pretty rare. You'll notice they don't have an inside corner. These are thin wall. British pattern, very rare. Uh, the uh, the fat wall standard, which are much more robust for hardwood, do have the inside corner filed, as I showed you. So uh, that's part of the filing process. Okay, and you would you would file those inside corners to relieve part of the bulk of the, um, well, the chisel force. And uh, mine will hold up, this is an inch and a quarter. Okay, and so you can see these, these ones are probably more for automatic machines, uh, which ran a couple uh, really uh, heavy pneumatics. At any rate, I thought, uh, thought you would enjoy that. Hollow Chisels 101. Okay, so the last little bit of, uh, well, knowledge you should know is when polishing the outsides, and of course you don't polish too much out, and you want to polish the whole thing. And the reason being is these are not parallel. The very nose, see this one is 882, but further down is only 871. If it wasn't that way, when you plunge these, you wouldn't be able to get them out. It's like a nail. So when you're polishing the outside for sharpness, make sure you don't narrow or roll off the front. You, these will be just so hard to deal with, especially in the larger ones. So remember that. When you're polishing, don't just polish the noses like you're taught to do chisels. These ones, you want to maintain that taper which it does take uh, some time to do. So see, 883, 871. Anyway, that's all I know about hollow chisels. Hope that helps.